Hey, Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman. Hey guys, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm. I always start my lives like too soon. So like on my end, I'm like talking and then when I watch the replay, I'm like mid-sentence when it starts in. So anyway, it's nice to meet you. If we haven't met before, my name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So today we're talking hydrangea care in fall. So the first thing I want to do is I have like a new mic set up today and I am like the world's worst techno person. So if you guys can let me know on like the chat, if you guys can hear, or if like my external mic is completely turned off and you're just watching me like, like lip syncing right now. So I'm going to hold on and see if anybody <laughs> says that they can actually hear me, or you can give me a thumbs up. Um, uh, give me a thumbs down, not a ton of you, but maybe like one or two of you, if you can hear me, don't give me like 5,000 th thumbs down or they're going to take me off of YouTube. <laughs> so anyway, oh, okay. Oh, good. You guys can hear me. Hey guys. Oh, we're good. Ah, oh, you guys are the best. Thank you. Okay. I'm like, wouldn't that be interesting if I did like an entire like half hour live video and you guys are just like trying to like lip read. So, okay, cool. Well, thank you guys for uh, a, a number of things. First of all, thank you for showing up. I love coming to you live every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. on YouTube. I love giving you some quick flower tips and I love having coffee with you guys. So thank you so much for that. And I wanna thank you for uh, the light ring that's like in back of me kind of lighting up my little tiny mini set in my kitchen because a lot of the Flower Tribe supporters have made contributions. They've bought me like a little cup of coffee in my supporters page below. I wanted to thank Mary R because she's providing today's uh, cup of coffee. So thank you for that because you helped me buy a light ring so I can have like a little bit of a better video instead of sitting here in like a cave. So I appreciate that. Um, let me give you a quick tip because I love giving you guys as much value as I can. I know some of you are, you know, you don't have a lot of time. So I'm gonna give you uh, the most important tip for fall, hydrangeas is to not prune them back at this time. This is like the number one no-no that I think people do because what happens is you'll have a lot of your hydrangeas that are like your endless summer, your big daddies, um, a lot of like the mop heads, they come in on last year's like growth. So they'll come in on, on like old wood. So right now, next year's blooms are being put in place on these guys. So this is just an example. Let me hold this up to the camera. This is uh, an endless summer bloom. And if you take a look down on the stem, these guys here, that's next year's flower. And this is gonna be next year's flower stems, next year's bloom. So if you go in there and fall and you kind of hack it down, you're gonna wind up cutting off most of those blooms for next year. Now, endless summer will come with a second burst of flowers towards the end of summer. That's why they're called endless summer. They're awesome. This is probably one of my favorite hydrangeas to grow uh, because of that. But the rule of thumb, especially if you don't know what kind of hydrangea you have, I know a lot of you guys are new homeowners, so congratulations. Um, and you're not sure what kind of hydrangeas are on the property that you just bought. So if you're not sure, just hold off. And I have to tell you, I don't know of many hydrangeas that really do well with a, with a deep pruning in fall. Most of the time, you're going to wait uh, even to prune back the hydrangeas that come in on new growth, like your limelights and your Annabelles and your Incredibles, you're going to wait to do that like at the end of winter or very early spring. And at the end of the day, guys, I know a lot of you that watch the channel know this, but I'm, I'm saying this for the people that are just kind of tuning in for the first time. Don't prune back your hydrangeas if they're doing well. So I'm like the laziest gardener you will ever meet. I like everything like no fuss, streamline. I don't want to deal with all the craziness. I hardly ever prune back any of my hydrangeas and they come in beautiful. You can see them on the videos. So when in doubt, just kind of hold off on the pruning. That's really important. However, let me kind of fix my camera just a bit here. I feel like I'm a little off center here. Um, however, things like the limelight hydrangea, look at this colossal crazy head. These guys you might want to just give like a dead heading to. And what I mean by that is to kind of clip them off like right here, because if the snow and the heavy rains of winter hit this bloom, it's gonna wind up probably cracking off some of these branches. So you can go into your hydrangeas, you can give them a deadheading. A lot of people say, oh, should, you know, should I, should I, um, <laughs> sorry, every now and then I check over the, the chat and then my, my brain is not capable of doing two things at once. <laughs> Thank you, Carol, for checking in from Lowell, Indiana. I'm sorry. I wish I could like multitask better. I can't. I know the millennials can do that. Like the gamers can do that. But I am just like old school. So I'm like, hold on, two thoughts. So anyway, you can do some um, deadheading this time of year. You could also go into like some of your hydrangea plants. And there's two different rules of thumb with that. Some people say you should go in there and you can kind of like deadhead some of these back. 
and um, you know it will it will help the plant because the plant doesn't have to support those heavy blooms. And other people say, well, if you have a hydrangea where those new blooms are coming into place this time of year, they need they may need some protection from the older blooms. So you might want to leave them in place. So you know, listen, if you live in a, a colder climate, maybe leave you know a lot of these in place on like your older like the older plants. Um, others of you can can deadhead them because some people like that look better. Other people love the look of leaving those spent blooms on the plant because when snow hits them, it's spectacular. Like it looks so pretty. Um, another really uh, popular question that I get asked is, you know, I want to make uh, arrangements out of my hydrangeas, but I don't want to prune them back at this time of year. So what do I do? So here's the story with that. So I went out to my endless summer uh, hydrangea bush before, and this is like one of the examples of like one of those new uh, blooms that came in towards the end of summer. I mean, is this spectacular? So on the same hydrangea hedge that I have right now, I've got a load of these that you know came in like the beginning of summer, they came in on like last year's growth and they're really beautiful, they're drying out to this like really beautiful, like antique -y look. But right next to them, I've got like a boatload of these guys, of like the, you know, the ones that came in on that second burst. So that's really cool. So you could still make bouquets out of them. And here's the secret with that. Just make your bouquets short bouquets. So when I cut this stem, you'll notice, you know, it's it's not really tall. It's not the really long one. So this entire stem, when it was in my hydrangea plant, was probably like from here, say the ground was down here. So what I did was I left like 80% of the stem in place, knowing that, you know, it's going to have some, some of those uh, blooms that are going to be set in place. So I just cut off like the top part. And I'm also just cutting off the tops of the part of the plant they're a kind of floppy, like they're, they're hanging over. I have like a, a thing of yews wrapped around all of my hydrangeas. And what happens is sometimes the hydrangeas get so big and colossal, they hang out over the yews and then they prevent the yews from growing and they cause some issues. So I'm going in there, I'm kind of very like carefully like snipping out some of those things, you know, some of the growth that I don't want to be there anymore. So you can kind of do some of that this time of year. And then you can make some really beautiful, pretty bouquets and then just put them in like some of the smaller vases. So you don't need to have a colossal vase with this little tiny dinky bloom. If you can have like a little tiny vase, and listen, guys, you can get these at like the dollar store. Buy a couple dollar store vases, pop four or five little tiny short hydrangea stems in them, and it looks amazing. It looks amazing in your kitchen. It's a great gift. I mean, you show up at a friend's house for dinner with like these four little blooms in this little vase, and you're like, oh, my God. Like, you know, it's like you're like the star of the show. So speaking of the star of the show, I have Lucy down next to me. I don't know if you could hear, she's actually snoring, but I think that this new mic that I have um, prevents you guys from hearing it. So, um, okay, let's see. I'm, I wanna answer some of your hydrangea questions today. I promise I'm gonna try to get to as many as I can. I also have some really exciting news. Today on this live, I'm going to give away uh, to one person my Gardening 101 online flower course. So um, I've got three courses that are coming out in hopefully the next two days. And one of them is how to grow perennials for a fresh cut flower garden. The second course is how to grow annuals for a fresh cut flower garden. And the third one is how to arrange the beautiful flowers that you've grown in your own gardens to make gorgeous arrangements for your home and for your family and friends. And they're $9.95 a piece. But if you buy my gardening bundle, like all three of them, you get three for the price of two. So information's coming out on that either today or tomorrow. And I have an early access VIP link for who's ever interested. And that's in descriptions below. I have it all over the place. I have it like on my LinkedIn, on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on our, our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. And what happens with that? If you grab that link and you can, you know, don't grab it now because I, I still want to talk to you guys. But when we're done talking, you can grab that link. And if you're interested, you can put your email in there. And then what's going to happen is we're going to send out the courses uh, to the people that are on that list first. And, you know, I'm offering it to everybody. I'm not like being selective, but I mean, everyone's welcome to, to grab that link. But once your email is on there, we're going to send the courses out to you guys first. And then the first 100 people that buy it, we're going to give you guys, you know, the three courses for the two. So that's, that's the story. So um, let's see, somebody has, I'm just, I'm, blah. Sandy K, your advice is helpful. Thank you, Sandy K. I feel like you gave me that breather that I need. I mean, I, I feel like sometimes I'm such a New Yorker. I like want to tell you guys everything really fast. And I'm like, all right, just, just chill out for a minute. So anyway, that's the story with that. We're going to wind up. Uh, that course is going to go live. We're going to send out the people on our early access mailing list 
the courses first, probably for like the first two days, either today or tomorrow or tomorrow and the next day. And then we're probably going to go live with the courses for everybody, probably closer to Sunday or Monday. So the company that I'm working with is called Retrieve. And what happens is I sent them over like a boatload of videos and we took some clippings from YouTube, a ton of brand new footage. They meshed them all together for me. And I chose like the flowers that I found were the easiest to grow that were so low maintenance that give me the most amount of beauty. And I've made so many blunders over the course of like the last decade with growing flowers that I wanted to save you guys a lot of time, energy and money with these courses. And so I sent them over all the stuff and I keep sending them stuff and they're like, we're going live you know, tomorrow. I'm like, no, 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 I, I got to show them one more thing. So yesterday we were supposed to go live. I'm like, no, I want to show them how to broadcast seeds, sunflowers and zinnias. <laughs> and these poor, I think a lot of them might be millennials. I'm not sure, but I think they're probably like rolling their eyes. Like I am not picking up the phone. Kelly Lehman's calling again. She wants to hold off on the courses. So I think I've literally uploaded every possible tip I could possibly give that I wanted to <laughs> for the first batch as of like 12 o'clock last night. So these kids are all like putting it into this format where you can search it really easy. Like you don't have to watch like all these videos once you buy the course. Like you can just type in um, the search bar, how do I grow sunflower seeds or planting sunflower seeds? And boom, like this little snippet pops up. And then you can listen to the course in French and Spanish and uh, German. So, and you can like read all the transcripts and you could just read the entire course. It's like this crazy technology that this company has. And so those, you know, that my, the, the retrieve people that are working on that back end searchability factor right now. And um, I'm just worried about giving you guys away the course now for free. So I'm trying to give as many of these courses away for free as I can. They gave me a number of co uh, coupon codes that I can give to you guys. And so anyway, I'm going to pick someone at the end of today's live for that. So uh, that's the story. Hey, Jalas, thank you from, for checking in from Atlanta, Georgia. So guys, please let me know where you're watching this from. I'm so excited to see how the flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. And you could just let me know like either the country or the state. You don't have to give me like your address because sometimes people get creepy. So anyway, all right, let's jump back into these flower tips. So another really important tip for hydrangeas in the fall is that people often want to fertilize them. They're like, oh, you know, let me give my, my hydrangea a little bit of, you know, food. I'll, I'll keep it happy for the winter. And that's probably not a good idea because the idea with fertilizing your hydrangea is you're encouraging like the blooms. You're encouraging it to like, you know, like flourish and thrive. And you don't want it to set off a ton of new growth at this time of year because the plant needs to go dormant. So you want to kind of tuck it into bed. You want to get it used to being like almost in like sleepy mode. You know, remember like with the kids, you'd be like, all right, you know, we got a half an hour and then we got to wind things down. So you want to wind things down right now. So um, instead of fertilizing it and like encouraging brand new growth, a better idea is to apply a little bit of like organic compost. And I read this somewhere online. I wish I would have remembered which garden channel that I saw it on or a blog, but they said there's a, a big difference between composting your plant and uh, fertilizing your plant. So when you fertilize your plants, you're feeding it, you're giving it like extra nitrogen and phosphorus and all sorts of good stuff. And you're encouraging it, you know, to bloom and, and, and to flourish. But when you're composting a plant, you're feeding the soil and you're adding some nutrients to the soil and you're kind of um, helping it to like uh, aerate a bit and to, and to help those worms and those helpful critters and creatures kind of make their way around it. You're kind of loosening up the soil and, and adding some really healthy stuff to the soil. And when the soil's really healthy, it helps the plants to suck up those nutrients. So especially if you have things like clay soil and sandy soil, and guys, in my flower courses, you know, I'm going to tell you about that. I'm going to tell you how to, how to find out if you have clay soil or sandy soil. I'm going to give you tips on like how to amend it. I'm going to give you like all sorts of links also to like follow and, and like, you know, go down these great wormholes of stuff that you're interested in. And so if you have like, especially like clay soil, that's really compact and, you know, it's really tough for your hydrangea roots to get established and spread out, then you might want to add, you know, a little extra dose of compost, especially in the fall. And then when you're done with the compost and you're kind of going to just mix in, you know, a whole bunch of like organic matter around it. Like, listen, your garden centers all have, you know, like a low, like bags of uh, organic compost. You can ask your garden center person which one they rec they they recommend for the hydrangeas in your area the most. And then once you're done, like kind of composting that, you're going to mix it in with the soil. You make a nice little, you know, like a pie. Then you're going to add some mulch and make sure that you don't mulch up against the base of the plant. 
I'm going to show you my little plant over here. Don't mulch up against the base of the plant. I know a lot of people think they're tucking their hydrangea in doing that, but you know what? You might cause some fungal issues because all of that mulch that's packed up top by those, you know, by that base is going to wind up staying wet longer. That's the idea behind mulch. You kind of want to sprinkle it around the base, like the, the almost like the drip line of the plant, because it's going to trap the moisture in, especially, you know, in like the fall winter months when you're not watering, you don't want to go out there, you know, that often you want that rain water to kind of stay put and, and stay, you know, like in that mulch. Now, here's another thing about watering. A lot of times in fall, we get like those really, really hot temperatures, like out of the blue. And what you want to do is keep up with the watering. So even though like your plant looks like it's dormant, a lot of like the, um, the blooms are like crispy and they're brown, make sure that you continue with the watering on those super hot days. Otherwise your plant's not going to be happy as it's going dormant, uh, in, in, in the fall. So that's really important to do that. Keep up with the watering, do like, you know, like, like a mulching around it. And then a lot of people have asked me this question. They said, well, you know, I get that, um, the, you know, like that freeze, like that bud freeze uh, in the spring. Sometimes I have the hydrangeas that are coming in on that old wood and they're starting to form, just like I showed you on that other endless summer. And then what happens is we get, well, I call it a winter zap. And then you might get like a late spring freeze and it zaps off all those little tiny buds that just came in on that old wood on like your, your Nico hydrangeas and your endless summer. So they're like, well, what do I do about that? And so it's really easy what you could do. You can just wrap your plant with either some burlap or you can wrap it with like a sheet or, and I'm going to show you how to do it in one minute. Other people decide to like, if you have your hydrangea plant, you can put like a couple like stakes around it, like just like bamboo poles or stakes. And then some people would just wrap chicken wire around that and they'll kind of zip tie the chicken wire to those stakes. And then they fill it with either pine needles or like, you know, some, some um, dried leaves. And then it kind of keeps those buds protected from those, you know, sharp winter blasts. But here's the thing, guys, if you live in a warm climate or even like in New Jersey where, you know, like I said, temperatures sometimes skyrocket. It's amazing. Sometimes in October, we'll have like an 80 degree day. I would not go out and do those things right now because you also don't want to cook your hydrangea. Like you don't want to have it wrapped up in burlap, you know, the first cold day that we get, say like in the beginning of October. And then all of a sudden you have like an 80 degree day and now your plant's stuck under this blanket. It's going to be like, are you kidding me? Like I'm sweating and it's, you know, it's not going to be a good thing. So you might want to wait to do these things in like either winter, like, you know, or like late winter. But if you live in like a colder climate, talk to the people in your garden centers. Garden people are awesome. I am like constantly at my garden centers and I'm like the annoying, like remember the annoying kid in school? I'm like, excuse me, excuse, you know, can I ask you a question? Ask them what they recommend as far as, you know, putting burlap wrap around your, you know, endless summer, your Nico hydrangeas, you know, what time of year they recommend that in, in your neck of the woods. So if you do decide to do that, Here's what I do. I'll go outside and pretend this is in the ground. I got all my little visuals here. So you're going to take a piece of burlap and you're basically just going to wrap it. You don't even have to put the stakes in the ground for this, but you could. It kind of makes it easier. Actually, it's probably a good idea because if you don't put some stakes in the ground, like just some wood poles, what happens is sometimes um, these wind up like flopping on the plant and you don't really want it laying on the plant. So I would put like a, a cut, like three or four poles surrounding your plant. And then you're going to just wrap it with burlap. And I love burlap. Like, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm like little house on the prairie. Like I've got all this fabric, like I've got a big bolt of, of, uh, burlap that we wrap our bouquets with. So you can just kind of wrap this around the plant. You're going to wrap it like, or say this is a steak. You're going to wrap it around those stakes. And then I just zip tie it. So I actually have the zip ties on from one that I had last year. I'll just cut like two little holes in the fabric. I put a piece of zip tie, like a zip, I love zip ties. I love zip ties and I love duct tape. I'll take the zip tie and I'll just zip tie it to the pole. And then I'll zip tie, you know, like another piece back here and I'll zip tie it all the way around the plant. And I'll just kind of surround the plant with it. And now it's protected and I'll come all the way up on it. Some people I've seen, they'll wind up actually like putting it over the plant also. I don't know how I feel about that because I'm a little worried when it snows, like is that gonna like weigh down on the plant and is it gonna affect the aeration? I don't know, let me know what you guys think about that. I love the Flower Tribes 
contributions to like things like this? Do you think that we should wrap it over the top? I'm thinking no. I'm thinking you're better off just wrapping it around it and you know leaving it be. So let me know if you've had good luck doing it on top also. I don't know that it's necessary, but um, let me know. I'm going to start taking a look at some of your comments for a few minutes, and I've got more tips for you, so, so hang on there. And guys, if you don't know about our Flower Tribe group on Facebook, you got to jump over there. It's so fun. So we have um, a Facebook group. It's called Kelly Lehman's uh, Flower Tribe Facebook group. And there are like, there's, I think there's like three or 4,000 gardeners on there. And they're like posting pictures of their own beautiful flowers in their gardens from like all over the world. I mean, you guys are on like almost every continent at this point. And you're asking garden questions over there. And then other gardeners are answering. So a lot of times you guys will ask me questions. I try to get to like so many of them every week, but I can't get to all of them. And so I appreciate you guys kind of fielding some of, a lot of those questions for me. So I appreciate that. Let me see if you guys have some questions here. So Kim, uh, you said you had a storm here and one of the thick branches snapped that holds other branches. It's a standard limelight. I'm scared it's gonna kill it. I will wait till spring to cut back if it makes it. Okay, so let's think about this for a minute. The thick branches snap that holds the other branches on it. All right, it dep like, is it like a primary branch? Cause if you've got, I don't know, I'm trying to do like a little visual here. If you've got a limelight hydrangea, say it's coming up, say like it's this big, if only like, I don't know, like a little section of it, and even if it's a thick branch, but if it's a section of it is kind of hanging there like cracked, I would just cut it. I would just cut it and, you know, if, as long as the bulk of the plant, the rest of it's in place, I would do that because you don't want that stress on the plant. Like you don't want that cracked branch kind of weighing on it. You kind of want to just, you know, cut it off and kind of let it heal. However, if it's like, you know, like in the center of the plant. And if you cut that off, it's going to take off like more than like, a, you know, a third of it. I don't know. I, I guess either way, it sounds like it's got to come off though. You know what? I don't know. Can you send a picture to the, to the, to the flower tribe? That's a, a good, a beauty too of that Facebook group. You can like send a picture and say, Hey, my limelight hydrangea just cracked like this. Anybody have any suggestions? So, um, yeah, I, I think my gut's telling me that you should probably give that branch that snapped like a cutting. And I think that would be a really good idea. Um, oh, Shirley Davis, you're in Monroe. You're so close. My mother-in-law lives in Clearbrook. My mother-in-law who I adore and is in my kitchen like three times a week lives in Clearbrook. I do, I, Edie, I love you. Um, you enjoy the program. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're, you're welcome for answering the questions. Let's see. So Sandy Kay says, um, there's so many hydrangeas. I know there's so many hydrangeas. I have to say, I made a video showing you guys like my favorite hydrangeas that I grow here on the flower farm. And I'll tell you what they are right now. So endless summer, I adore those. So like those, you know, those, those blue ones that, you know, they, they turn, you know, antique in the fall and they're beautiful, fresh like this. So I, I really, I'm like insanely crazy about endless summer hydrangea. Uh, I also love um, incredible. They're like the new kicked up version of Annabelle. They have sturdier stems. They're by Proven Winners. Proven Winners sent me like a boatload of them and I'm absolutely loving them. They've got those thick, sturdy stems and they've got the big white snowball blossoms on it that turn green that make for terrific dry cut flowers. So those are terrific. I also love Annabelle. I'm partial to Annabelle. Limelight, I cannot get enough of. I literally have, I don't even know. I have like probably like 30 or 40 limelight hydrangeas on the property. I cannot get it. I'm addicted to them. This is what one of the limelight hydrangea blooms looked like that I showed you last week. One of the flower tribe members have, had asked me, can you show us how to dry them out? And uh, I showed you like, like a semi-fresh one and it's completely dried out today. And the steps that I did to that, if you don't feel like going back and watching last week's live, guys know that I always repost these lives. So if you can't make it like you're at work or you're taking your kids to school or you got a doctor appointment, don't worry about it because I, I always repost them and you can always grab a cup of coffee or a Coors Light later and watch it. You guys know that I love my Coors Light and I love my whiskey. So you can you know, grab a little whiskey. And this is what we did last week. I just put all of these blooms in fresh water and they were from a limelight hydrangea bush. The blooms, however, were green. It's really important that if you're gonna dry out your limelight hydrangeas, you don't cut them when they're in that white fluffy stage because this is what's gonna happen. This bloom was like you know, 90% green, but the top part was still kind of white. And when you try to dry out like a fresh hydrangea, this is what usually happens. Can you guys see how it's all like squishy? Like it's all kind of beat up, it looks kind of mushy. Whereas the, the blooms on the side are nice and fluffy, they dried out like that. And this, the color is not picking up very well on my camera, but this is like a bright green bloom. But the ones that were white, 
look super, super squishy. They don't look good. So wait until your hydrangeas are like your limeite hydrangeas, your Annabelle hydrangeas, your incredible hydrangeas. Wait until they're semi-dried out. Same thing with uh, your endless summer. Wait until they're semi-dried out. They almost feel like papery. You can kind of hear them. If you go like this and it sounds like tissue paper, it's a great time, you know, to, to kind of cut them for bouquets. But then, and some of you have seen this like a million times before, but I have to show the people that are, that are tuning because this is too good to be true. I have um, spray paint for flowers and there's a whole bunch of different ones on the market. This one's called Just for Flowers. It's fresh green. This is not uh, a product placement or, or, or sponsored. I just love it. And I've got links to this in my Amazon shop page uh, below. You could check, check that out. That I do have affiliate links to. So thanks for the support. Anyway, you can kind of just give it a spray. And I'll show you the difference in color once you spray it. I hope I'm not spraying like my camera right now so that you guys have like a big green film over it as you're watching me. So here's the difference in color. Oh, my hands are all green right now. So here's that green color that I just did. I feel like the camera's not picking up enough of the color. And here's what it looked like before. Oh yeah, you can tell the difference. So here's before the spray, and this is what it looks like after the spray. And guys, they have these floral spray paints. They come in like blue, or maroon, or whatever. So you can like go crazy with these guys. It's almost like, it becomes a real time suck though, because it gets very, very uh, addictive. So, um, Let's see. So Cynthia Richards, you said newly planted limelight tree. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up, Cynthia. You're the best. Do they need protection? You're zone six. Okay. So I'm zone six too. And guys, if you don't know your, your planting hardiness zone, um, this is one of the links that I added to my course. Just like go into Google. Don't do it now because I don't want to lose you. <laughs> go into Google later and just type in USDA planting hardiness zone. And there's like a whole bunch of bloggers and gardeners that have put the USDA um, hardiness zones on a map. And you basically just type in your zip code and it will say, oh, Cranberry, New Jersey, you know, here's what the map looks like and you're planting zone six. Well, they don't say it. You have to kind of, you know, figure out what color you are. So that's really important because that lets you know which plants are going to do best in your planting zone. So back to your limelight, Cynthia. So um, a few things about a limelight tree. I love limelight trees. They're gorgeous. What you could do is take just like a regular limelight plant and you can actually gradually prune it. You kind of prune away the branches and then you can turn it into like a beautiful tree form. And these look amazing in like front landscapings. Um, but I have seen a lot of um, people do this trick in the winter and this is awesome. They'll take two pieces of wood on either side of it and then just kind of tie a rope around it for the winter because the blooms are usually pretty heavy on there. You might even want to consider like, I don't know, well, you don't want to cut too much of it off because you're going to get bigger blooms next year, then you're going to have the same problem. But you might want to put those two posts, like two, like two by fours on either side, and then just wrap it to support that trunk. And as far as wrapping it, I have to say, I usually don't burlap wrap my, oh, listen, you definitely don't have to burlap wrap your limelight hydrangea. I'm, I'm being a doofus right now. Limelight hydrangeas come in on what's called new growth. So you don't even have to that because you're not going to experience that winter zap. So when the limelights come in in spring, they come in on brand new green stems that form in the spring. So you're probably never going to get that winter zap on your limelights. And the same thing goes for your Annabelle's, same thing goes for your Incredibles. And that's one reason why people love those types of hydrangeas so much because you don't have to worry about winter zap because they come in on new growth in spring as opposed to growth that's being put in place right now on the old wood varieties. So as far as your limelight goes, no, I do not think that you need to wrap it. I think you're good. I would, however, support it possibly. Um, if it's really, if it's young, like if you just put it in as young, it's probably not a big deal. But if you've got one of those giant mama ones where like, you know, the top part is like a tree and you've got this little tiny branch, I don't know. I would give it a little support for the winter, you know, especially during the snowstorm, especially if you're in a place uh, that gets snow. So um, I know this doesn't look real. Isn't that crazy? I have to tell you, I've got one tree. I think it's got like 400 of these blooms on it right now. It's, it's just absolutely insane. So if you're going to get um, a no fuss, you know, like it thrives on neglect uh, hydrangea, I would get a limelight hydrangea or Incredible or Annabelle. They're amazing. And uh, this brings me to a, I have like my little show notes here. So this is another great tip I wanted to give you guys. Uh, fall is the best time to plant. So like I know a lot of people that are outside were so busy planting in spring because the garden centers are like throwing all these plants our way and advertising and everything's beautiful and lush. But it's easier to plant 
your new plants in fall because you don't have to worry about those hot summer temperatures coming and you know like like making the plant go kaput before it actually got established. So if you're looking to add some new plants to your garden, I know the selection's not the best right now, but listen, I went to Home Depot two days ago and they had knockout roses on sale that were spectacular. They were not even beat up. They were gorgeous. They were in full bloom, 50% off. And there had to be like 30 of them. And then um, I also love growing uh, Proven Winners has uh, this beautiful roses called Oh So Easy Roses. So it's O-S-O, -S -O, like Oh So, Oh So Easy Roses. And they're spectacular. They remind me of like the knockout. I did actually, I planted a memorial garden. Proven Winters sent me a whole bunch of them. I planted a rose memorial garden in my mom's honor. She loved roses and um, it, they're absolutely beautiful. So look for those sales at your garden centers because the garden people, the garden centers want to move these plants out of their, uh, you know, out of their places. They want to put the Christmas trees up. They want to put the Halloween stuff up. So try to scoop up some peonies and try to scoop up, you know, your, your hydrangeas and just look for some healthy leaves, pop them in the ground. The trick is to make sure that you massage the root balls first because a lot of them are going to be root bound from sitting in those pots all season, massage those roots, water your plant when it's still in the pot. So here's what I'll do. I'll kind of give it like a real, I'll, I'll water it in here like the day before I put it in the ground. And then I'll kind of lift it up. I'll massage those roots and then I'll pop it in the ground. I like to make sure that I, I bury most plants, especially hydrangeas, either like soil level. You don't want to plant it too deep where like the water's going to puddle up on it because hydrangeas don't like to have soggy feet. So you're going to plant it like soil level or a little tiny bit higher. And then, you know, you're gonna put the mulch around it. You're not gonna put the mulch up against the bark and you're gonna make sure that you water it in and that you keep that hydrangea nice and moist, not soggy. You don't want puddles around it, but nice and moist uh, for the first, you know, couple of weeks as the roots are getting established. And when you dig your root hole for your hydrangeas, always make it wider, like, a, like bigger, like maybe two times the size of the pot. So make that hole, like maybe, you know, I would dig a hole, in the ground that you know was like twice the size of this but not twice as deep just twice like the width because those roots are going to wind up having an easier time breaking through uh that softer soil but then but make sure that you when you backfill it and you can add a little bit of compost within that soil to make like a little like a little cake you can kind of just pack everything down because you don't want to have air pockets so make sure you pack everything down and then you water but now is a terrific time and now is a great well not now but like fall this is still like just the beginning of fall i'd wait a little bit more because temperatures are like 85 here now i'm like sweating it is so hot um so wait until it gets you know colder and the plants start going dormant and that's also a great time to start transplanting a lot of your plants so um fall is a great time for transplanting it's a great time for planting and so let me see if there was anything else i wanted to tell you guys about uh, fall and your hydrangeas. I thanked Mary R. Thank you, Mary R. Again for my cup of coffee. Let's take a quick coffee break. Do you guys have coffee with you? Who's drinking coffee right now? Nobody better be drinking whiskey right now. That's that's for later. That's for happy hour. Okay, now's a great time to plan. Okay, I think I told you guys all the things that I wanted to tell you about um, this. And so once again, guys, if you're interested, please uh, get on my VIP early access. Uh, list for my, um, you know, those courses that are coming out. I'm going to pick a winner in just a couple minutes. I want to see if there's any other questions I can answer for you guys. So Suzanne Curry, hey, you live in, in Georgia. Hey, nice to see you. Okay. So um, I'm going to say your name wrong again. I'm going to try really hard. Zeke Man. I know last week you told me how to say your name and I, I'm just being a doofus. But anyway, thank you for this question, Zeke Main. Hi, Kelly. We just bought a house with six hydrangeas, three limelights, Canis. Oh, I love those banana trees, etc. Wow. I feel so overwhelmed hoping I can learn enough from you to keep all these still alive and beautiful. Okay. So uh, a few things. Number one, um, congratulations. That's so exciting that you have all these plants. I mean, you, and you have amazing ones too. So don't be overwhelmed. I have like done every mistake in the book, especially with hydrangeas. You literally, it is so hard to kill a limelight hydrangea. I mean, it's, it's really difficult. They are so sturdy. They are so hardy. I cannot even begin to tell you how much I love this plant. So chances are you don't have to worry about the limelight. Um, some of the other plants, just make sure that I don't know what zone you're in. I'm assuming that you're in a very warm zone because you have banana trees. So I'm a little bit jealous. And if you live in a colder zone, know that some of those, um, some of those plants have to be dug up, some of them that you have. So, uh, 
what else do you have here? The can of sea. I think that has to be dug up. The banana trees, I'm sure, can stay put. Um, yeah, I'm really curious where you live. Don't be overwhelmed. Gardening, I really feel like God put all these flowers and plants around us to bring us peace and joy and beauty. Take a breath. My, my garden was a disaster. It looked like a disaster for probably like five or six years. And I didn't care. I truly didn't. I just, I loved being out there with like the two things that were thriving. And I would just look at those. And the rest of the weeds and the stuff that I knew was dead that I killed, I would just be like, you know, listen, I'll, I, I learned a lot. I won't do that again. Like, I love that line. Well, I'm not going to do that again. So I think you have to go into gardening with, with that, you know, that mentality, knowing that you're going to do your best to learn about it, but there's going to be mistakes. And listen, sometimes things, you know, they, they don't thrive and we have to figure it out. So, and, and when you make a mistake, you learn from it. So listen, you know, it's, it's all good. And it's plants there that are to, to bring us joy. So make sure that your plants and your garden are bringing you joy. And, and, you know, ask yourself the question when you're upset about something in the garden, does it really matter? Like, does it really matter that that limelight hydrangea, you know, didn't quite flourish as it was supposed to, that my endless summer didn't give me two, two things of blooms? Most of the time it doesn't matter. So just enjoy it. But I'm excited. You have terrific, terrific plants. Uh, Robert, nice to see you. Oh, you, don't worry, Robert. That's okay that you're late. You can always check the repost. We didn't pick our winner yet for the Gardening 101 bundle. So you're actually right on time. You're awesome. Oh, you're in Tennessee. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to say your name wrong again. Z Main. You also have roses, crepe myrtles. Oh my God. Hey guys, if you are looking for a great flowering tree and you know things are on sale now, grab some crepe myrtle trees. Oh my God, they're insane. Check out some of my garden tour videos. I cannot recommend this plant enough. It is so easy to grow and it's just beautiful. It comes in pinks and purples. And I think it's a very underrated uh, plant. And a lot of you are asking me for like landscaping ideas. Check out Crepe Myrtle at your local garden centers. And I love like um, flowering cherry trees. Oh my God. So those are like two of my favorites. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alina Torres. Hi, Kelly. Um, you're back home. Oh, you were on vacation last week, right? I think you checked in on, on vacation. That was so cool. I was telling Sheldon about that. You brought back four limelight with you. Wow, that's a souvenir. That's how did you bring those back? Yeah. Um, oh, you're the envy of the neighborhood. Yes, I know. I love garden envy. I love when people are like, oh my God. And you're like, oh, you know. <laughs> so limelights are a great plant if you would like to have neighborhood garden envy. And uh, Diane Miller, you're your big hydrangea flowered last year, the frost killed the blooms. I know that happened to me with a lot of mine too. It has many different colored blooms, purple, pink, green. Um, oh, were you asking me what kind it is? I don't know. It might be a LA, LA dreaming maybe, or a, um, listen, it, it might be an endless summer. Sometimes those have all different color blooms. You can also alter the color of some of your hydrangeas, like your endless summer, uh, when you, you know, work with the pH, um, in the soil. So I have a live, uh, YouTube video, like in, in one of the back channels, you can check that out if you're interested in doing that. But yeah, okay, interesting. Any other questions I can help you guys with? You have seven hydrangea plants, Robert. So your tips on pruning are terrific. Oh, great. Oh, I'm, you're in Seacliff, New York. Oh, nice. I grew up in New York. I grew up on Long Island. I know. Can you tell by the accent? <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Diane, yours are endless summer. Oh, great. Oh, wow. I love that you have both pink, blue, and purple blooms on those. That's that's amazing. I love how that looks. That's That's spectacular. Okay, so, um, oh, Alina, you, you secured the box. So you brought your limelight hydrangeas on a plane and they arrived. Well, I have to tell you, Alina, you just won my gardening bundle, my gardening 101. I have to write down your name because that blows my mind. I mean, that is, <laughs> that's like dedication. So I'm writing your name down. If you can, please contact me on Kelly Lehman at cranberryfields.com. Hold on. <laughs> write your name now, because I'm going to send you a link to my gardening 101 bundle, because that's insane. So Alina, basically, it sounds like you went on a plane, like you went through security with this too, I'm assuming, which I'm shocked they let you. And you brought three limelight hydrangeas on a plane with you. Okay, you deserve the gardening 101 bundle. So um, my email, once again, is Kelly Lehman, K-E-L-L-Y-L-E-H-M-A-N at Cranberry Field, it's spelled like my, my farm. And there's like links below to how you can contact me. Please send me um, your, your email address because I want to send you that Gardening 101 bundle. And guys, I'm going to be doing more giveaways with my Gardening 101 bundles where I'm going to give more Flower Tribe members, you know, like, like free access to that. Because I, 
I love you guys. You guys are like awesome. You you like tell me the funniest stories and you're like you're just a fun group to be around. And I know a lot of you have like secured a lot of friendships with each other uh, through, you know, the, the Flower Tribe Facebook group and through Instagram. And I just love that you guys show up all the time and you're just I just adore you guys. So thank you so much. Let's see what else is going on. Do I ship plants? Oh, that's a that's a great question. I do not ship plants. Um but I know that uh, there's some, I love proven winners plants. I know a lot of those are shipped through like Amazon and uh, you know, some of your local garden centers. And I know dutchbulbs.com, they ship their peony, uh, bare roots. So, but I always, uh, uh, sometimes I really love to just go to um, the garden centers and I, I try to pick out the hydrangeas and the peonies that are the largest sizes. I know it's not always the most economical thing to do, but I try to go like at the end of the season when they're on sale, because when I first started off my flower farm, I was like, this is one of the biggest mistakes I made. I would buy like hundreds of plants that were really tiny that I hadn't, I hadn't dealt with yet. So I didn't know they're, they're, how, how, how to grow them. And I would put in like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little tiny plants. And then I wouldn't really know how to properly take care of them. And then I would kill hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plants. And I thought I was saving money because they were so cheap. But I almost think that the way to go, if you're just starting off with some of these plants, is buy one that's like pretty established, is kind of mature, because the chances are it's probably going to take in your garden a little bit easier because it's a mature plant and it's not just like a little baby one. So maybe buy like the larger size ones that are on sale, especially if you're experimenting with them, pop it in the ground, and then start to learn from it year to year. Sometimes it just takes a while to like get that dance going. Uh, trust me, I know. So, um, all right, guys. Um, um, oh, thank you, Lynn Reynolds. Oh, I appreciate that. I always appreciate your kind comments. And guys, if you can, if you can help me out, if you can do like a little like, if you like the video and do like a little comment below, that would be awesome. That just helps my YouTube algorithm. And um, I'm gonna see you guys next Thursday, hopefully 1030. Every Thursday, I try to show up for all of you. Please uh, hop on over to that Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. It is so ridiculously fun to be there with, with, with all the gardeners from all over the world. And um, if you're on that uh, VIP early access list for the guides, you're going to be getting that link from me. I hope by the end of today, possibly tomorrow, if I'm being a real pain in the neck and I really just have to keep tweaking things again, possibly on like Saturday or Sunday, the people that retrieve right now are going, no, she didn't just say that. But I want it to be perfect. I want it to be great. It's just, it's a terrific, especially for beginner gardeners. These guides are gonna show you how to plant like the easiest uh, annuals in your garden. I'm going to show you how to plant uh, sunflower seeds and zinnias and cosmos and marigolds. And um, I'm going to show you how to grow celosia. And I chose flowers that are like drought tolerant. So you don't have to worry about keeping up with all the watering. And I chose the flowers that like will bloom from June all the way through the frost. So like your garden's going to be like on fire with color the entire summer. And I found uh, the, the flowers that were so easy to grab the seeds from in fall. So that, uh, and I'm gonna show you how to harvest the seeds. You pack them up and then you just replant them the following, uh, you know, the following spring. And so your garden's gonna be in like this beautiful, beautiful state of bloom. And then I chose like maybe like five or six amazing perennials that I love. Like my, my Sarah Bernhardt peonies, I'm gonna show you how to grow. I'm gonna show you how to grow these uh, endless summers. I'm gonna show you how to grow these insane limelight hydrangeas. And then I'm going to show you tips on, you know, keeping them alive. And I'm going to show you some terrific tips on how to harvest them. And then that last guy is going to show you how to put all these crazy things together because we have a florist here. And so whenever we're like building out flowers, I'm always like, oh, I want to show the flower tribe members how to do this. Oh, this is such a simple trick. I wish I could just show them what we're doing now with this oasis foam and this, you know, string. And, and so I'm like, well, why not just like make a guide and show them? So the arranging guide is going to show you really basic arrangements in the beginning. And then we're going to build our way up to like these crazy wild dahlia arrangements. I'm going to show you guys how to grow dahlias too. I mean, dahlias are insane. So I'm just learning a lot about them and I love those. And I love sharing um, all the things that I've learned with you because you guys are allowing me to be on YouTube and on social media so much more because you're supporting my channel. You're showing up here, you're leaving comments and um, it's, it's helping to support my dream of helping gardeners from all over the world to grow beautiful flowers in their own backyards. I mean, that, it's just absolutely amazing to me that you guys show up for me like this every week. So, um, hey, Fred, how are you? Solosia, you haven't heard that flower. Oh, oh, you haven't heard it for the past 40 years since the greenhouse work. Oh, okay, so Fred, so you know. Listen, if you don't know about Solosia, hello, 
you've got to, I think I have a couple videos in my playlist about like, um, oh, I definitely, I have this great video that I love and it shows you how to harvest celosia. These plants are insane. I don't know why they're not talked about more. I love celosia. They're crazy. They're drought tolerant. Check out that video. It's in, you know, one of my playlists there. You'll see it like on my homepage and it tells you how to harvest their seeds. And um, it shows you like a whole bunch of the, the plants. They have <laughs> one of the, the, the varieties is like, it looks like a brain. Like it looks like a velvet brain, literally. I think it's called brain celosia. And it's just, I mean, I had one last year. It was this big. It looked like an actual person's brain growing in my garden that was like red velvet. And it's gorgeous and beautiful. Some people call it coral, um, but you'll love that. So um, that's the story. And um, oh, thank you, Christy. You love the live video chat. Yeah, the bundle's awesome. And I'm fine. We're trying to find a way now with this gardening 101 bundle. We're trying to find a way that if you guys have loved ones in your life that are gardeners, uh, we're going to come up with a way that you can buy it for them. So wouldn't that be fun? Like Christmas time rolls around. We're going to come up with like a card that I'm going to send to them saying, hey, you've just, you know, been given, you know, like the gift of gardening love from, you know, from Cynthia. And then it's going to have like an access code that the loved one in your life can just go online and all of a sudden, boom, like these gardening courses pop up. And another nice part about the gardening courses is you're going to have access to me. So you're going to have the opportunity to like, if you have a gardening question, like, you know, we just go, I try to get to as many of them that, that, that I can. Sometimes I can't. If you have a gardening question, you can just type in, um, you know, hey, Kelly, it's Cynthia. My, my leaves on my hydrangea are yellow. Here's a video. Like you can actually send me a video and then I'll reply back to it. And the way that that works without making me, without, you know, making me like have hours and hours and hours of like crazy work you'll wind up getting like your first question for free. And so then after that, if there's like, like a pressing question that you just can't figure out online or through your garden centers, then every additional question, there's like an upgrade. I think that it's, I think it's like an extra dollar. And then you can send me like your video and then I'll get right back to you. It's, it's like almost like having me like on available on text. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to get back to you that same day, but within like a very short period of time, I will be answering your questions through those uh, garden channels and through those garden courses. So it's going to give you access to me. So um, that should be fun. We'll see how that works out. So I'm really excited about them. And um, let's see. Yeah, Kim Shelton, Proven Winners. I know, right? Proven Winners, I adore them. And they just sent me like three or four of their, well, they're sending, they're on route right now. They're probably on the plane like our, <laughs> like our friend uh, who took the plane, the limelight's on the, on the plane. They're sending me a whole bunch more. So as these proven winners, as these new varieties are thriving in my garden, I'm going to be teaching you about them as I learn because I love learning side by side. Oh, and before I go, I wanted to give you guys just a quick update. Remember we were propagating hydrangeas. Some of you are with me for the live ones over the summer. Well, hello. A lot of these hydrangeas have uh, sprouted roots. Took a while and I have them right now. I'm going to like flip my whole table over doing this, but I have to show you. So I'm so excited to show you guys these things. Hold on. <laughs> my husband walks in. He's like, what are you? You should see my house as I'm setting up for these YouTube live videos. I'm running around like a chicken without my head off from my gardening barn to the garden. Uh, trying to get all these things to show you. Check this out. All right. So here's what those propagated plants look like. And in this tray, I've got a, uh, I've got a whole bunch of perlite. And at the other side is vermiculite. And if you're not familiar with vermiculite and perlite, they're just like a, a terrific planting medium when you want to do cuttings. Uh, it's very loose. The vermiculite actually feels almost like sand. And it just is a better medium to grow your cuttings in because it's not like growing them in soil where everything gets really tightly packed. And sometimes um, the plants wind up getting moldy before they get roots. So I put these guys in the ground probably about... I mean, I'm sorry, I put them in, in this tray probably about four or five weeks ago. And I don't know if you could see this. You can almost see it better in the water. There are roots that are growing down there. You see them? I'm going to hold it up. I think, oh, maybe you could, no, I think you can see better in the water because it's like magnified. There's roots coming from the side. And one of the ways that I knew that this plant was sprouting was because I had like new leaves coming up in the middle. So I have a whole video showing you how to propagate them. I'm trying to see if I have another one where it has better roots here. Oh, this one. Oh my God. This is, this is the first time I've seen this one. Hold on. They've been sitting in this little greenhouse that I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> Holy smokes. I'm so excited to show this to you. This is the first time I'm seeing this. Look at these roots. Can you see them? Yay. So here's what I did in case you didn't, in case you don't want to watch the video. 
I'm like such a spoiler alert. I'm going to tell you what I did. So I basically just cut off um, like the tops of some hydrangeas from my endless summer, from my Annabelle. And I made sure that I had a couple leaves on them. And then I just cut into the leaves because I didn't want to have too much green growth. And then I basically dipped them in some rooting powder. And some people say you can use cinnamon or honey, but I like using regular rooting powder. And then I just dipped them in some vermiculite and some, you know, some of the perlite. And I covered it. Look how beat up this got. It's just like a jiffy little cover. Like it's and now it's like a little greenhouse effect. So it looked like this. And I kept it underneath one of my hedges because I didn't want it to have direct sunlight. I just put it uh, underneath like one of my hedges that so it still got sun, but it was like dappled sun and it was like kind of like semi shade. And it's been sitting there for like four or five weeks. And I give it a shot of water. I make sure that, you know, it doesn't dry out. And I'm so excited because what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind up putting all these hydrangea cuttings in the ground. I'm probably going to let the roots get a little bit bigger because they're kind of like mini right now. I'm going to wait um, probably like another couple of weeks. I've got a long time before that first ground freeze. So I want to pop these in the ground at least six weeks before the ground freezes. But I also want to give it like a little more time to, you know, to get those root systems going. And then I'm going to wind up having like what, like 25 new hydrangeas. So um, how exciting, how great is like hydrangea propagating? And if you take a look underneath your Annabelles and your Incrediballs, those guys are self-propagating all on their own. If you take a look at the bottom of your plant, you're gonna see they kind of go right that as the leaves, as the branches kind of flop on the ground, those roots start popping right out after a while. And if you wanna help them, uh, you can do like a little scraping. I have a video on that too. You could do, I think it's called how to propagate your hydrangeas. Just scrape the bottom of one of those stems and put a rock on top Make sure that you leave some of the green leaves in place. And within a couple of weeks, that plant's going to start taking off uh, into the ground. And I have to say, one of the Flower Tribe members, I think his name was Super Woody Boy. He sent me, like in comments, he said, well, instead of just, you know, doing that in the ground, why don't you make things even easier and take a pot? So, like, take, this was such a great tip. And actually, a couple of you told me that. Uh, you take a pot like this. If your Annabelle hydrangea is sitting next to it, you take one of those long branches and you make sure it has a lot of leaves on it. You can kind of cut off the bloom. You do like a little scraping on the actual, you know, like branch, like underneath like a set of leaves. And then you just dig a little hole in the pot of soil. Uh, you can put a little vermiculite if you want in there to kind of make it nice and loose. And then you put the rock on top. So now that, you know, so, so it's still attached to the, to the plant. It's still attached to the Annabelle or the limelight or, you know, or the Incredible. And now it's got the rock on top, the branches in the soil. You know, you, you did your little scraping underneath it. And now the leaves are popping out because it's continuing to feed it through photosynthesis. And then within like five or six weeks, if you kind of lift the rock up and dig down, you're going to see that you've got a brand new plant that's already potted. What? I know. Is that crazy? And then that's kind of like a really fun gift to give to somebody for Christmas, along with the Gardening 101 bundle. So, you know, just a little <laughs> a little uh, extra tip there. But thank you, Flower Tribe, for always being generous with your tips. And please continue to give us tips and comments below and comments on the side. And please continue to ask questions. And um, yeah, whew, I was actually sweating when I set up before because I was just, and I'm sorry that I was a little bit late, but sometimes like my timing is off and I was like running out to the barn because I'm like, oh, I to show, oh, I want to show you two more things. Hold on. Sorry. If you are collecting seeds from your gardens right now, don't do this. I love teaching you guys the blunders that, that I did and that I messed up. So I went out to my uh, field before I have all these zinnias growing. They're beautiful. This is a super easy annual flower to grow and they're super easy to collect the seeds, but make sure you wait until like these beautiful leaves are kind of brown they're kind of faded, they're crispy, because if you go out into your flower garden now to collect seeds, here's what they're gonna look like. So this is how you collect an actual zinnia seed. You just pluck the petal off, there's gonna be an arrow underneath it. So actually, this arrow right here isn't that bad, it's kind of dark, but the bulk of them up here, this is the fresher part of the flower. If I do that, see how it's white? So this seed is not mature just yet. So you can go into your garden and you can say, oh, I'm going to harvest my zinnia seeds and you pluck them all out and you save them and you put them in a cool, dry place and you're going to put them in the ground next summer. Nothing's going to come up because that seed isn't mature yet. So the, the mature seeds on zinnias, like I said, wait till they get like really brown. And I show you how to do this on the gardening guides. Um, you wait till they're brown. You wait till these seeds are like really, really dark. 
And then you just, you know, store them away in the winter. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that too. But don't go out there now, you know, plucking these thinking, oh, I've got all these, you know, great white, beautiful zinnia seeds because they're probably not going to be mature enough. And the same thing with, I've got a little celosia bloom here. I literally was like grabbing like scissors and cutting on my way. I was running into the house to get here on time and I'm running with like all these vases and Sheldon's like, hey, I'm like, I can't talk. I'm going live. He's like, excuse me. So this is what a Cosmo bloom uh, looks like right before it's ready to have the seeds harvested. So the best time to harvest your Cosmo seeds, these all actually start to fall off. And this little yellow piece in the middle is not yellow anymore. It actually looks like, um, like Horton Hears a Who. Like remember that flower in that Dr. Seuss book? It's just like these little prickly things coming off the top. It actually just looks like... Um, it looks like a little Star Wars thing. It's just like little prickly seeds coming off the top. So you won't see any more yellow. You won't see any more of these. So right now it looks like you can harvest the seeds, but I would not because they're not, they're not ripe yet. And if you come in here, you can kind of see that they're just starting to form. But once again, they're kind of white. They're white. They're yellow. They're kind of fresh. They look like this. They're not mature yet. The mature seeds are kind of like black and dark and they're, they're, at, they're like pointy, they're prickly. So wait until you, know, you, you go out and, and more of these fall off and this is more of what it's gonna look like when it's ready. It's gonna look like this, but with little round prickly things coming off the top instead of having this little yellow center. Nothing fresh, there's gonna be nothing fresh about this plant when the seeds are ready uh, to harvest. So, okay, now I, I know I keep saying that I'm done and I'm not. <laughs> I'm like rambling. All right, guys. So um, that's it. So I guess we're going to talk next week. And uh, I'm glad that you guys like the seed tips. Let's see. All right, guys. So that's it. I guess we'll we'll talk next week. I hope to see you guys on those gardening 101 bundles. And if you can, you know, give me some feedback on my Kelly Lehman at uh, cranberryfields.com. If you buy those, send me an email, let me know what you think. And what's nice about these guides too is it's like a living document so I can constantly upgrade it. So you might say, you know, uh, uh, oh, oh, I really like, you know, I love the limelight hydrangea section, you know, can, it, it, on your next guide, can you give us more? Or can you tell us this in the guide? And I can actually add stuff to it. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, Robert, for the, <laughs> for the support. I appreciate that. That means a lot when you guys do super chats. I don't know if you guys know that there was like that little super chat button. That always cracks me up. My kids always uh, get a kick out of that too. So that's, that's kind of fun. So thank you for that. Once again, your continued support is really important to me. I really appreciate it. And um, I want to come up with some more gardening guides for uh, the holidays in addition to like this gardening 101 bundle. So I'm thinking um, maybe one uh, just solely on hydrangea care and one solely on peony care and maybe one, you know, basically on uh, propagating tips. So let me know what you guys are most interested in learning about because all the tips and all the guides and, and all the videos that I make, they're for you and they're to help you become better gardeners. So I wanna know what you're most interested in. The reason why I made this Gardening 101 bundle is because I put out a couple, um, a, a couple polls over the past like six months and I did it on Instagram, I did it on Facebook, I did it on YouTube. And that was the number one thing uh, that you guys had told me that you wanted to learn about was how to grow a fresh cut flower garden in your own backyard. So you guys were the entire inspiration for uh, the entire three courses that I made. So uh, please, you know, continue to give me your questions. Let me know what you're interested in. And I will try to continue to provide as much value as I can each week. So, all right, guys, let's see what else. Um, oh, the email. Okay, I'm actually going to write it out. Hold on a second. Because my, my, the name of my farm is Cranberry Fields, but it's spelled like my town. So it's like a really wacky spelling. So I'm going to write out. My email is actually on the bottom of, uh, of my YouTube page, I think. Hold on. So it's Kelly Lehman at Cranberry Fields. I would say it if I could talk and write at the same time, but apparently I can't, dot com. Okay, and I have it right underneath Alina Torres's name because she's the Gardening 101 bundle winner. So here's my email. <laughs> Is it backwards? I think it's backwards. Well, if it's not. So it's Kelly Lehman, K-E-L-L-Y-L-E-H-M-A-N, at cranberryfields.com. And Alina Torres is the winner of our Gardening 101 bundle. This is the lady in case you're coming in late. She actually brought three limelight hydrangeas with her on a plane when she was on vacation and she brought it back home with her. 
So she won the gardening 101 bundle. Alina, I'm gonna um, wind up giving you a code. Once we go live, we're not live yet. So uh, those courses are gonna be live in just a few days. And then those of you on the early access list are gonna get a link to that before everybody else. And then you can decide whether or not you wanna buy them. And the first 100 people are going to get all three courses for the price of two. And so, yeah, so that's it guys. So thanks again. Um, so fun being here with all of you. And I will see you guys um, in the next video. And hop on over to Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because everyone's hanging out there a lot. <laughs> see ya. It's like the, the gang's over there now. Bye.